A text that was way ahead of its time. A text that could have made us an interplanetary civilization. A text that would change how we look at the stars. Welcome to Theory of Science. Today, we're going to talk about a 1000 year old text from an ancient astronomical catalog. If you want to know your position in these stars, do subscribe to our channel. So, what is this video all about? Well, the short answer is that researchers from the French National Centre for Scientific Research or CNRS, Sorbonne University and Tyndale House have made the discovery of fragments of the star catalogue compiled by the Greek astronomer Hipparchus during the 2nd century BC. These texts were removed from a medieval manuscript in order to reuse the pages and they were later rediscovered using multispectral imaging techniques. A fresh perspective on ancient astronomy is provided by the analysis of these passages, which was published in the Journal of Ancient History of Astronomy. Quite easy to understand. And the long answer. The study reveals what appears to be the oldest and most conceivably most precise list of ancient stars that we have ever known yet to have never seen. Only hundreds or maybe thousands of other authors have referenced it in recent years, but the catalogue produced by a person who is truly kind of iconic in terms of the works they produced and the ways in which they inspired astronomy and mathematics. We will briefly discuss the famous Hipparchus catalogue which was developed by the founder of Astronomy. Hipparchus was a Greek astronomer from antiquity who, like many of his contemporaries, was much ahead of his time and had so many amazing notions. It's actually a highly accurate inventory that can be found online and it was first released in 1997. The catalogue was about 120,000 distinct stars. The data was from Hipparchus satellite was gathered to generate this catalogue, which in this instance was a 1989 to 1993 European Space Agency mission that was withdrawn. The primary objective is the quick, accurate astrometric observations of as many nearby stars as possible. Astrometry, in case you forgot what it is, is basically the measuring of minute movements of stars by observing how they wobble and move. This can be used to calculate then the differences between them and, perhaps, find planets orbiting them. Hipparchus was the first mission of its kind, in this case in 1989, and all of this mission's triumphs contributed to the development and production of the universally iconic font which has recently started gathering more data by processing billions of different items at once. However, that is not the major topic of this discussion because these are space catalogues of various stars or brilliant objects. Since the Greek astronomer Hipparchus from Nicaea, who is regarded as the father of trigonometry, is named after the satellite, its name is actually an acronym for High Precision Parallax Collecting Satellite. He invented it and was the first to apply it in a wide range of situations. He may use it, for instance, to precisely measure the equinoxes. He also was the first to measure the sun's incredibly precise movements as well as the other objects in the night sky, leading to the development of the first practical, accurate procedures for forecasting solar eclipses. This was done roughly 2200 years ago, between 120 and 170 BC, and of course, the solution in this case used trigonometry. He was also the first person to ever discover the recession of the Earth. Basically, as the Earth rotates and moves about the solar system, the axis shifts, as well as perhaps developing the astrolabe, an extensively used ancient astronomical tool. Therefore, it is possible that he made the first astromestic measurements of multiple far-off stars with this specific device. Oh man, this guy Hipparchus is way too smart, and whoever subscribed to the channel will also get his wisdom. So what are you waiting for? Thank you, now let's get back to the topic. At hand, 850 stars were included in the inaugural catalogue which was created using the scale we still employ today and with incredibly precise locations and brightest measurements. They effectively created the foundations for the concepts and symbols that are still in use today, 2200 years later. But the only source from which we genuinely have knowledge of this book is written by Claudius Ptolemy 300 years later. A very well-known Greek who probably had access to some of Hipparchus's writings added some additional stars of his own to formally produce a new inventory that contained roughly 1,000 stars. Supplying reasonably accurate coordinates for the location in this instance, along with the brightness of course. His measurements, however, were not very accurate. In fact, there were several mistakes and some historians have even hypothesized that he may have only had a cursory comprehension of the most underlying mathematics. He might have simply copied and paraphrased a significant portion of Hipparchus's own writing.
Now, I'm not claiming that he copied Hipparchus, but he might not have completely grasped all of the underlying math. Ptolemy is still well known even now for a variety of different reasons, yet many of his other theories and computations are undoubtedly flawed. He is well known, for instance, in his geocentric model. The moon is the secondary planet from the center of this model, with the Earth at the center. During the Latin Middle Ages, this concept was undoubtedly generally accepted. But as of today, we are aware that he was equally out of place here, and in that regard, the most significant aspect of my guest is that he informs us of the existence of Hipparchus and his incredibly precise catalogue. However, the issue is that no one has seen it before, even us. Small pieces of this star catalogue were discovered utilising multispectral imaging techniques below the medieval religious text. Or scanning these pages revealed that the document originally had a different writing at the top. A later study revealed that this is possibly the lost astronomical catalogue produced by Hipparchus himself after constructing the actual letters from the letters, which is simply astounding in terms of historical relevance, or at least in the history of astronomy. These are the actual first letters of the man who founded astronomy itself and was the field's first recognised astronomer. The writing itself is contained in the old Christian literature found in the Codex Climaci Rescriptus. Sadly, one of these items currently belongs to a private collector. Even though it is part of the so-called Museum of the Bible, it holds private ownership. Inferring that some of the early Christians may have discovered that Hipparchus's inventory seems obvious. But after that, they basically tried to obliterate the writing and use some manuscript to reproduce some of the religious writings. Which, given how expensive and uncommon the manuscripts were, was actually pretty frequent. It would make sense that they would actually try to trash it and then reuse the recycled text for their own writing if they came upon something useless or unrelated to their own faith. This was called palimpsest, and it was actually quite frequent. But I think the obvious question is, what does this actually say? In any case, it appears to pinpoint the precise location of numerous stars. The most significant finding of this particular piece is that it appears that Hipparchus's star catalogue is not the only one that Ptolemy's star list is a duplicate of. Because his observations of the stars, he gazed at coordinates that were substantially different from these. Ptolemy was mistaken in this instance, in fact. From Hipparchus's list of stars, researchers were able to identify four separate constellations that appeared to provide stellar observations down to the nearest degree, a great deal more precise than Ptolemy's. Then another shows how far ahead of time this lovely individual truly was, more accurate and precise than many people who came after him as well as everyone who came before him. This effectively identifies four separate stars according to the real text in English, with one degree description that is fairly accurate. Here's the Greek version if you speak that language. Don't worry, you can always pause and read this. I don't speak Greek, so I'm sorry, but there is one more reason why I won't try to read this, and it's primarily because it only provides coordinates and doesn't really convey anything else. However, what matters most in this situation is how exact and far ahead it was. Occasionally, it leaves me wondering. Suppose historic Greece continued to develop and the Roman Empire did not capture it, which caused it to fall apart and usher the Dark Ages. Would we have evolved into an interplanetary species if we had continued to advance? It's a very big if after all. However, the things that ancient Greeks were doing were far superior to anything else. Even when measured against researchers who lived 2000 years later, it wasn't until the 20th century that we truly understood what was happening and could make a more precise observation and forecasts. Therefore, something to ponder. This significant discovery, according to the research team, provides fresh insight into both the early development of science and the history of astronomy. Above all, it demonstrates the power of cutting-edge methods like multispectral imaging, whose application to incomprehensible palimpsests could prevent the oblivion of innumerable forgotten works on gardening, medicine, or philosophy. And with that, we conclude today's video. Please submit your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching and for your continued support. Please remember to like, subscribe and share. Also refer to other videos on our channel for more content and we'll see you in the next one.